Alfa Romeo 145-146 is a rare breed of Amazon. Alfa Romeo 145-146 is rarely seen on our roads. Which, however, is not surprising, because there should not be a lot of iconic cars, otherwise they turn into ordinary consumer goods. In the vast majority of cases, these models are bought by people who know what they need, although it happens that a person gets into the Alpha quite by accident. In this case, there can be only two options for the further development of events, either he falls in love with the car, or begins to hate it. In the second half of the 90s of the last century, Alfa Romeo produced two golf class cars at once under different names. First, a three-door hatchback appeared on the market under the index 145. The model had a very interesting appearance, and not only the front part with the predatory beak stood out, but also the back. It is thanks to her that you can sometimes hear that the Alfa Romeo 145 is one of the first attempts to create a hybrid of a traditional hatchback and station wagon. Well, as for the design, no one expected to see something boring and primitive from Alfa Romeo. Still, an attractive appearance has always been a huge plus for all Italians. And six months after the premiere of the Alfa Romeo 145, its show took place in July 1994, a five-door car was also presented, outwardly similar to a sedan, but representing the same hatchback. This model was called Alfa Romeo 146, and from a technical point of view, it is no different from the 145th Alfa. But where the big advantage of the five-door car lies is in more space in the back seat, a comfortable fit and a slightly larger trunk, 380 liters versus 330 liters with the rear seat up and 1225 liters versus 1130 liters when folded. For a long time, the weak point of Alfa Romeo was the body, which sometimes began to rust after a few years of operation. However, Alfa Romeo 145-146 have already been freed from this scourge, and by now, even models produced in the mid-90s should not have any signs of corrosion. It should be noted and a very good paintwork, perfectly holding for many years. But what can upset is the high prices for body iron and optics. If you buy branded parts, they will be very expensive, and experts do not recommend taking left ones. It's sad, but Alfa Romeo owners, regardless of the model, get into accidents quite often, because the brand's image sets up for fast and aggressive driving. No wonder after all, after 1997, without exception, all Alfa Romeo 145-146 were equipped with the firefighting system, which, in case of an accident, turns off the fuel supply system in thousands of a second. Very often you can hear the opinion that one of the biggest advantages of Alfa Romeo cars is their powertrains. Indeed, in most cases, these cars have very good dynamics, but not all engines are suitable for Alfa Romeo 145-146. And the point here is not so much in the horses, but in reliability. The history of the release of Alfa Romeo 145-146 can be safely divided into two stages, from 1994 to 1996 and from 1997 to 2000. In the first, only boxer gasoline engines were installed under the hood, for which Alphas of the 80-90S were famous, now only Subaru put such engines on their cars. Alfa Romeo 145-146 was equipped with three opponents. The weakest of them had a volume of 1.4 liters and a power of 90 horsepower. Then came a 1.6 liter engine, 103 horsepower, and, finally, a 1.7 liter 16 valve unit, weaker engines had 8 valves each. Alfa Romeo 145-146 1.716 V already had a herd of 129 horsepower thanks to which the maximum speed of the car was 200 km h It is believed that of the entire range of boxer engines, it is the 1.7 liter that suits the Alfa Romeo 145-146 best of all, as it makes the car really fast, which is very important, as you understand, for a model with the proud name of Alfa Romeo. However, practice shows that the rather high power of the unit has a downside. The fact is that the design of the 1.7 liter engine is quite complicated because it has four camshafts and two timing belts with four rollers at once. It is because of the latter that quite often big troubles occur, the belts can break and the rollers can jam. And as a result, the owner ends up with a rather expensive repair, $600 to $900. Moreover, replacing the timing belt even every 60,000 kilometers does not at all guarantee the absence of problems, it is not uncommon for belts or rollers to fail after 15 to 20,000 kilometers of run. 
That is why it is highly recommended to change belts and rollers on a 16-valve boxer engine every 10 to 15,000 kilometers. Moreover, the operation is not cheap, 200 to $250, and this amount will have to be laid out a couple of times a year. Therefore, the most optimal engine for Alfa Romeo 145-146, released in 1994 to 1996, is considered to be a 1.6-liter engine. It is, of course, weaker, but its operation and possible repairs are cheaper. The same replacement of the timing mechanism is enough to carry out every 50 to 60,000 kilometers. In fact, models with a 1.4-liter engine also look good, but some speed lovers are sure that its 90 horses are too few. Well, starting from the end of 1995, the gradual decline of the era of Alfa Romeo boxer engines began. The fact is that this year the 145 QV Quadrifoglio model was shown with an all-wheel drive system and an inline four-cylinder engine from the 2.0-liter twin spark family with a capacity of 150 horsepower since 1997, 155 horsepower. Unfortunately, a little later, Alfa Romeo 145-146 was no longer equipped with an all-wheel drive system. At the end of 1996, other inline engines appeared with a volume of 1.4 liters, 103 horsepower, 1.6 liters, 120 horsepower, and 1.7 liters, 140 horsepower, and then 144 horsepower. With a curious feature of twin spark engines is that there are two spark plugs on each cylinder, which improves fuel combustion. Moreover, candles have different sizes, large and small. Original candles are expensive, about $30 each. Non-original, they are worse, are cheaper, $5 for the large and $13 for the small. And because of our gasoline, sometimes you have to change candles once a year, one and a half, when buying branded parts, this operation will cost about $250 to $300. Because of our gasoline, the Lambda probe also suffers, another $100, it is usually enough for three years of operation in Russia. Inline engines also do not have the most reliable gas distribution system, it is better to change the belt and rollers after 60,000 kilometers. With a run of 100 to 150,000 kilometers, the thermostat and temperature sensor usually fail, evidence of a breakdown is poor engine performance throughout the entire rev range. Replacing both will cost about $100, including labor. Sometimes, on cars that have just been brought from abroad, the engine does not start well in severe frosts. But there is nothing terrible. At the Fiat car repair shop they know about this problem and are ready to slightly reprogram the brains of the car. It is difficult to say which of the inline motors is preferable. They are all quite reliable and, with regular maintenance, work faithfully for 300,000 kilometers. But perhaps the 1.4 liter engine, 103 horsepower, is still considered rather weak, although you can accelerate to 150 kilometers slash h even on our roads in such a car. Alfa Romeo 145 slash 146 with the 2 liter unit, of course, the fastest. But on the other hand, their fuel consumption is decent, in the city, with sharp starts, otherwise it doesn't work, about 15 liters of gasoline are consumed per 100 kilometers. Sometimes you can find Alfa Romeo 145-146 with a diesel engine. It had only one volume, 1.9 liters and a power of 90 horsepower. The speed characteristics of such machines are approximately at the level of a 1.4 liter gasoline unit, and fuel costs are much lower. However, when deciding to buy a diesel Alfa, you need to be aware that these Italian engines need high-quality diesel fuel and competent maintenance. In addition, with high mileage, diesel engines can require very high repair costs. So it makes sense to buy an Alfa Romeo 145-146 with a similar power unit only when there is complete confidence that the odometer has not been twisted and the car has undergone constant maintenance. There is only one gearbox on Alfa Romeo 145-146, mechanical, 5-speed. It is not clear why, but automatic transmissions were not installed on cars even with the most powerful engines, and after all, such cars would certainly have been in some demand. By itself, a manual transmission is considered reliable, especially on cars with inline engines, but sometimes the surprises are presented by the clutch. So, after a run of 50,000 kilometers, the hydraulic clutch pump may fail, due to which the pedal does not return to its place, $180 and sometimes the pedal gets stuck at the bottom due to leaky rubber cuffs of the working cylinder. Typically, 
treatment costs no more than $40. Well, sooner or later, as a rule, with a run of 100 to 130,000 kilometers, you have to buy a new clutch kit, $220 to $250. The Alfa Romeo 145-146 uses independent suspension front and rear, which has a very positive effect on the car's handling. Needless to say, the entire suspension of the Alfa Romeo 145-146 is tuned for fast sports driving. Unlike many other cars of this class, the Alfa suspension allows you to fully realize the capabilities of the engine, and even at speeds over 150 km h the car does not float on the road and keeps the trajectory very clearly. The power unit allows you to go faster, but this already requires a perfectly smooth highway. Otherwise, the joints and waves, which are full on our routes, will greatly annoy. After all, the combination of the concepts of rough road and high speed makes Alfa Romeo 145-146 a real stool that can shake out the whole soul. Yes, and on the wallet, such a ride is reflected far from the best way. At least the majority of Alfa Romeo 145-146 drivers have to change shock absorbers, stabilizer bushings, and silent blocks, levers, ball and silent blocks are not sold separately and other elements every 30 to 50,000 kilometers. Sometimes you can hear that the big disadvantage of the Alfa Romeo suspension is not only the fact that spare parts need to be changed quite often, but also assumptions about the crazy high cost of these very parts. Like, sorting out the suspension even on a small Alfa Romeo costs about the same as on a Ferrari. In fact, this is absolutely not true. Of course, if you buy spare parts exclusively from Alfa Romeo, and even at branded service stations, then the price of the parts may seem prohibitive. And even that is unlikely. For example, the original front lever will cost $100 to $140. The rear levers, however, are somewhat more expensive, $160 to $200. Although it makes no sense to look for original details, practice shows that you can find good spare parts manufactured by Lucas or Moog, half the price. And do not forget that some parts of the Alfa Romeo 145-146 suspension, for example, the same shock absorbers, are suitable from other models of the Fiat Concern. As a result, some owners prefer to put on their Alfa shock absorbers from the Tipo model costing only $30 to $45. The braking system on the Alfa Romeo 145-146 of the first years of production is not the best, there are disc brakes in front and drum brakes in the back. Since 1998, without exception, all models have received modern disc brakes, and the front ones have become ventilated. ABS on cars before 1997 is also far from always found, although this device would obviously not hurt such a fast car as Alfa. So there are certain complaints about the Alfa Romeo 145-146 brake system. But to say that the car brakes badly is still dishonest. When checking out the car, it's a good idea to pay attention to the brake discs, as they often warp and have to be replaced, $100 each and about $30 more for labor. But branded brake pads last a surprisingly long time and are able to withstand up to 40,000 kilometers. Moreover, they are inexpensive, $25 for a good set. The Alfa Romeo brand has a rich history. It is generally accepted that it all started in 1906 when a production facility for the assembly of French Derrick cars arose in the town of Portello near Milan. These machines were not then in great demand in Italy, and therefore in 1910 it was decided to start production of other machines under a new name. This is how the company ALFA, Anatoma Lombarda Fabrica di Automobili, Lombard Automobile Factory, appeared. The first to leave the gates of the new company was an open 5-seater 24CB model with a 4.1-liter engine with a capacity of 42 horsepower. In 1915, ALFA was bought by businessman and engineer Nicola Romeo, thanks to whom the well-known name of the brand appeared. The first car under the name Alfa Romeo began to be made in 1920. It was the 20-30ES model with a 4.2-liter engine with a capacity of 67 horsepower. With, for a long time, Alfa Romeo cars were only available to rich people, but after World War II, it became clear that a cheap model was simply necessary to survive. And in 1954, the Guglietta model was born, produced with several types of bodies. The predecessor of the Alfa Romeo 145-146 is the Alfa Romeo 33. This car first appeared on the market in 1983. At the 33rd, 
carburetor boxer engines with a volume of 1.3 to 1.5 liters were first installed. In the same 1983, an all-wheel drive version of the Alfa Romeo 33 saw the light, and a year later, the station wagon version. In 1986, Alfa Romeo loses its independence and comes under the wing of the mighty Fiat. In 1990, the Alfa Romeo 33 was upgraded, and a 1.7-liter injection 16-valve engine was installed under the hood of the car, which at first produced 133 horsepower, later 129 horsepower. In mid-1994, the Alfa Romeo 145 three-door hatchback was introduced, which received a five-door version six months later was already called Alfa Romeo 146. At first, the car was equipped with 1.4-1.7 liter petrol boxer engines of an old design, as well as a 1.9 liter turbo diesel. In 1996, all boxer engines were replaced with 1.4 to 2.0 liter inline engines from the twin spark family with two spark plugs per cylinder. Well, in 2000, the Alfa Romeo 147 model was shown to the public. The car turned out to be so successful in design and design that it was awarded the title, Car of the Year 2001. Alfa Romeo 147 is now equipped with petrol engines of 1.6 liters, 105 horsepower or 120 horsepower, 2.0 liters, 150 horsepower, and a 250 horsepower V6 with a volume of 3.2 liters. Such a power unit is put on the 147 GTA version, which appeared in 2002. In addition, there are two 1.9-liter turbo diesels that produce 115 horsepower or 140 horsepower.